Well, hey everybody, this is Robert and welcome to Outbreak News TV. Well, it's summertime, the water's warm, and there's Naglaria Fowleri cases in Karachi, Pakistan. And here was a report from about a week ago through the media source Dawn. Um, out of Karachi, uh, primary amoebic meningoencephalitis, or PAM, caused by Naglaria Fowleri, has claimed two lives in two months, health department officials stated on Friday. One patient died in mid-May and the other was in the first week of June. They were under 40 years of age and remained hospitalized for some time. Uh, the information we have gathered indicates that both have got infected during wazoo or ablution, said Dr. Shaquille Ahmed. Um, Asked about the delay in announcing the, re the deaths, Dr. Ahmed, Ahmed said that the staff was waiting for official notification um, from the Naglaria team and that the department took all necessary uh, steps in time. We have already started our work in contacts with relevant stakeholders being made for the preventing of deaths for the infection. That is to make sure that piped water and swimming pools are properly chlorinated. And last year in Karachi, there were five fatalities. And this report came out in Sama, uh, another Pakistani news source. And the headline says, Naglari of deaths, 70% of Karachi water supply not chlorinated. I'm going to go on to take a look at this. A new Karachi water and sewerage board report on water quality has revealed that 70% of its pumping stations are supplying water containing either low or no chlorine, which is a defense from the Glaria fowleri, the brain-eating amoeba, that swiftly kills and has claimed two lives recently in the city. Uh, the Karachi Water and Sewerage Board took samples from all its pumping stations after the Sindh Directorate of General Health Services recommended checking how the water is being chlorinated and if the levels of at all major water reservoirs were meeting World Health Organization requirements. The findings were submitted to the World Bank Initiated Karachi Water Sewerage Service Improvement Project. It showed that 87 out of Karachi's 123 pumping stations were supplying domestic water with low or no chlorine. Okay, so that, 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 explains a lot in, in, in uh, Karachi, Pakistan, and why they are seeing year after year multiple cases of Naglaria fowleri. And the first, just a little history, the first case of Naglaria fowleri was reported from Karachi, Pakistan in 2008 in a 25-year-old male who had a history of swimming in a river, part of the domestic water supply to Karachi. So this is I think Pakistan as a whole didn't see their first case till early the early 2000s. So this is a relatively new phenomena being seen in Pakistan and in Karachi specifically. This uh, report out of the Lancet from uh, last January 2020 um, talks about the prevalence of Naglaria fowleri in Karachi. Uh, it says the, uh, the amoeba is an emerging problem in Karachi, which is a major metropolitan city and coastal site of Pakistan. Um, in Karachi itself, the first case of PAM was reported in 2008, and up until October 2019, 146 cases have been reported from Karachi. In only a decade, the, no, no, the number of PAM cases in Pakistan exceeded those reported in the USA during a course of a half a century. So 142 cases were reported in the USA between 1968 and 2019, according to this report. Uh, another difference is the highest number of PAM cases in the USA are reported in children under 14. However, in Pakistan, most cases are reported in adults, 26 to 45 years, and they say, which points to a possibility of a genetically unique strain in Pakistan. 
Um, all of the reported cases of PAM in Pakistan, uh, all of them were in Muslims, and only two individuals had a history of recreational water activity. Therefore, it can be inferred that Naglaria fowleri exists in the domestic water supply in Karachi, and that infection largely results from ablution. Ablution is a uh, nasal rinsing uh, that's often used in religious um, uh, ceremony and like that. Okay, and this was a pretty interesting study from the International Journal of Infectious Diseases. It's a, a year or two old. And you can see on this graph that uh, this is in Karachi, and the red line is the chlorination of the domestic water supply. And you can see kind of peaks in March, and by June, it's almost undetectable. It looks like it's undetectable. Uh, the green line is the average temperature of the water, and of course that peaks in the summer, right? No surprise there. And the blue line is the number of fatalities from the parasite, which also you see this peaking right around June, July, and August of the year. <clears throat> and they did a study of the waters, uh, water supplies. They did some sampling. Well, first let me just give you a, an idea about the numbers that they, they reported. Uh, according to a retrospective analysis of data from 2010 to 2019, um, in Karachi, 96 uh, laboratory confirmed fatal cases occurred in the city. So that's what prompted them to uh, perform this study on the water supply. Oh, and if you want to take a look at the age groups, it's, mo it's mostly in males, right? 92% uh, in males, 8% in females. Not a whole lot in young children, but you see it in that um, young adult to go into middle age, uh, a, a large percentage, somewhere hovering around 70% are in that age group. All right, back to the, their, their observations. Uh, we observed that Naglaria fowleri was absent in samples with detectable chlorine levels um, and in normal temperatures of uh, less than or equal to 25 degrees C. So the parasite is not seen when there's detectable chlorine levels of 0 0.1 to 10 milligrams per liter and at normal temperatures of less than or equal to 25 degrees Celsius. Several factors may have precipitated these fatal cases to occur. Some of them are changes in the lake's ecosystem, rising temperatures, uh, and the ever deteriorating quality of water treatment plants and the distribution systems. However, according to our study, the most damaging factors were undetectable chlorine levels in domestic water supply and rising temperatures. Our results reinforce that Naglaria fowleri can only survive when there are lower level of chlorine in the water supply and sustained hot weather, as was demonstrated in the graph. Our findings suggest that chlorine concentrations are inconsist inconsistent throughout the water distribution system, which allows Naglaria fowleri to survive and thrive as a biofilm throughout the supply lines and into household plumbing and overhead water storage tanks. Chlorine treatment as biocide effect is an important element to eliminate Naglaria fowleri without forgetting the quality of of water treatment, which is consistent with previous reports. High temperatures of greater than 25 degrees Celsius and the paucity of detecting chlorine might have provided favorable environments for Naglaria fowleri to survive in domestic water. Enhanced and consistent chlorine pumping from April to October at water filtration and distribution plants are the best possible ways to control the growth of Naglaria fowleri in domestic water. So more or less, the problem in Pakistan is different than the US where domestic water, because of ablution, uh, appears to be the primary source of the parasite. While in the United States, where we do get several cases annually, uh, it appears to be more, more, more often than not in recreational water sources. 
Okay, just a, a, a brief look at, at the parasite itself. It's, um, it's a free-living amoeba. It can cause rare and devastating effect of the brain called primary amoebic meningoencephalitis, or PAM. It, the amoeba is commonly found in warm fresh water, lakes, rivers, and hot springs, and can be found in the soil. The glaria follera usually infects people when contaminated water enters the body through the nose. Once the amoeba enters the nose, it travels to the brain where it causes PAM, which is usually fatal. Infection typically occurs when people go swimming or diving in warm freshwater places. In very rare instances, neglaria infections may also occur when contaminated water from other sources, such as inadequately chlorinated swimming pool or heated or contaminated tap water enters the nose. You cannot get infected by swallowing water that's been contaminated with the parasite. And I just want to look at a few of their uh, FAQs real quick. And um, how common it is the parasite in the U.S.? They consider it rare. In the 10 years from 2010 to 2019, 34 infections were reported in the U.S. So that's about a third of what they saw in Karachi, Pakistan. Of those 30 cases, um, of those 34 cases, 30 were infected by recreational water. Three people were infected after performing nasal ir irrigation, uh, neti pots. And one person was infected by a contaminated tap water used on a backyard slip and slide. So the child was sliding on the slip and slide and water rushed up his nose. Um, I want to talk real quick about the treatment. Well, let's talk about the fatality. Fatality rate is over 97%. In the U.S., only four people out of 148 known infected individuals since 1962 through 2019 have survived. And uh, most of those were just in the past eight years of the, the survivors. Is there an effective treatment? Not not so much um there is the uh, uh a regimen of different drugs that they they use different combinations and uh the one drug called miltefacin has been used and has helped with the survival of at least two people okay so say 148 cases since 1962 through 2019 and that's not including uh anything from 2020 and just uh just a side note that our website outbreaknewstoday.com reported at least three uh, cases in 2020 one was of course in late jackson texas you may remember that story um in brazil where a six-year-old child uh, contracted the parasite from from the water and then we also reported that there was two cases reported last summer in Florida uh, one in a child from Palatka Florida and another one uh, was somewhere in Hillsborough County we never got any specifics on that so you can check out those stories on outbreaknewstoday.com anyway We'll be keeping a very close eye on this parasite as the summer moves on um, in Pakistan and here in the U.S. Uh, and see how things pan out for 2021. Again, I appreciate you watching. Comment below. Uh, subscribe to the channel. Like the video. Share it with your friends. And I'll see you next time.